Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to welcome you to this message today. Uh, this week we are focusing on celebrating the day of Pentecost. And today I wanted just to share about the ministries that we receive from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has specific ministries that God has allowed the Holy Spirit to be able to uh, release it on us and on our behalf. So today we are going to look at these ministries and see what it means for us, what it means in our relationship with God, so that we can be encouraged. So the first ministry the Holy Spirit has been given, the Holy Spirit is involved in creation. Uh, we are going to see that from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And the Bible says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Also in Psalms 104 verse 30 it says, You sent forth your Spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. So we see the Holy Spirit is involved not just in creation, but renewing the face of the earth. The Holy Spirit is in charge of uh, helping God implement the sustenance of creation. We know from the Bible, the Bible says that the Lord created by speaking forth the word of God, which we know that is the agency through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But to be able to implement everything, for creation to be created and to be sustained, to sustain everything that God is doing, you need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit involved uh, in, in dealing with plants, with animals, things that have to do with God's creation. And this is very important because many times we think that we sustain ourselves. Yet it's the Lord himself who sustains us by his spirit. In Psalms 104 it says when the God sends forth his spirit to the earth, there's not just creation, but there's also renewal. So the Holy Spirit is involved in renewing creation and renewing uh, people's lives. We are part of creation. Another uh, function of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was involved in, uh, in the writing, inspiration, and of explanation of scriptures. We are going to see this from Psalm, uh, first, second Peter chapter 1, verse 21. The Bible says, For prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So all the writers of the Bible, the apostles and the prophets, wrote based on what they were hearing. They were inspired of God. They, they received the revelation from God, Okay, so the Holy Spirit is involved in revelation and also inspiration. And we know that they were inspired because Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we see that Paul says that the Holy Spirit does not just, just give the revelation of the written scriptures when he gave it originally to the apostles and prophets, but also inspired them. That means the very choosing of the words to write in original languages came from the Lord. Every other language except the, the languages the, uh, the scriptures were written in, which is Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, are like a form of translation. You cannot really say they're inspired. But in the original languages, whatever the words they used were selected by the Holy Spirit. But now what applies to us, uh, the Holy Spirit also is uh, part of explaining the scriptures or giving us light to understand the scriptures or what they say theologically gives us illumination. And this one we find from the John 14 verse 26. Jesus says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, when the Father will send him in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit teaches us. As we go through the scriptures, he teaches us. First of all, to the original people he spoke to, the apostles, the Holy Spirit caused them to remember what he had taught them. And that's how we find out they were able to write the Gospels and the New Testament. But also for us today, the Holy Spirit gives us light understanding. When we are reading, he's able to take the scriptures and apply it to our lives and apply it to our situations. To apply this in our lives, you need to remember whenever you read the scripture, the Bible is not like any other book. 
you need to pray and ask God to um, cause it, the light of God to shine on it so that when you understand, it can apply on your personal situation. It's good in your Bible reading, not just to read like any other book, but to take time to ask God to explain to you the meaning, to apply the scriptures in your life. Another ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives that affects us is found in uh, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. He says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So one of the other ministries of the Holy Spirit is to help us to deal with the enemy, Satan. Whenever there is a flood, uh, the word flood here is a symbolic word of an attack or overwhelming uh, force of darkness. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will always lift up a standard against the powers of darkness. Now this word assures us as believers that if we walk in the Holy Spirit, we will not be overwhelmed by the enemy. There is no attack that can come in our lives that can defeat the Holy Spirit. If you read in the Bible, uh, right from Genesis to Revelation, in the Old Testament, one of the Lord's name is the Lord of hosts. And if you read the book of Acts, one of the names given to the Holy Spirit is the Lord of hosts. That means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all of them are involved in warfare against the kingdom of darkness. So for us as believers today, the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to do proper warfare. I have never believed when you are doing warfare that we should depend on our own strength or our own wisdom. In fact, good warfare in the Bible is when we are led by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord himself, so that he can guide us on how to engage the enemy without causing problems to ourselves. This, this requires that we learn to be dependent on the Lord. We need to learn to listen to what he's saying. We need to learn on his strategies when we are dealing with the powers of darkness. We do not need to depend on our own strategies or what has not been approved. In fact, you cannot even take from what we learn from natural warfare and bring it to the kingdom of God because the Bible says our weapons are not like the weapons of the world. They are different. So the Holy Spirit, one of the ministries he, he deals with or he enables or releases on the earth is to learn to deal with the enemy. Another ministry of, uh, of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. Now when Jesus was living, he said clearly that I will not leave you as orphans, but the Father will send another like me. And when he comes, he will teach you, he'll bear witness to me, so you find that the Holy Spirit, because Jesus cannot be physically available to everyone, is through the power of the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is available to everyone because he has been poured on earth. When we have encounters with the Lord, it takes the Holy Spirit to encounter the Lord because he, he has been given ability to be everywhere. When Jesus was on the earth, he was physically limited in time and space. He could not be at the same time in every place. But when he rose from the dead through the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus has received back his glory, his full glory to be like God the Father, where he can be everywhere. He knows everything. He's omniscient. He's all-powerful and he's all-knowing. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we have that access. We know that Jesus Christ was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. We see that in the, in the Bible. The Bible says, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit was involved in the birth of Jesus Christ. Just like today, the Holy Spirit is involved to us when we get born again. You cannot be born again without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was involved in the anointing of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus was not just the Son of Man conceived by the Holy Spirit, but to serve God, he was totally dependent on the Holy Spirit. And this is a pattern for us. We as born again people, believers, we really need to depend on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We should not do God's work in our own strength. 
we need to seek the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the God's approval upon us so that you can do his work. Uh, the Bible says, uh, the same revealing Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So the Holy Spirit, just like he led Jesus after baptism, also the Holy Spirit leads us. We have to learn to be led of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, as the Son of God, depended on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide every day. We, are, as children of God who are born and know him, we also need to learn to depend on him to be led of him. So the Holy Spirit plays a very big role in the life of Jesus Christ. There's a scripture I really like, it says here in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Now in the book of Luke says, But if I cast out devils by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So in the Bible, symbolically, the finger of God is the power of God. Okay? So Jesus says that he was able to deal with demonic powers through the power of God. So the Gospels were written on our behalf so that when we see the pattern of how the Lord Jesus served the Lord, we are supposed to follow his example. So through the Gospel, the Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus is really is. And when you read the Scriptures, sometimes when you read the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit reveals to us who Jesus who was to come. In the Gospel, he reveals to us who Jesus was on the earth. In the New Testament, he applies the work of Christ in our lives. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus, even up to today. Another ministry of the Holy Spirit is to, to the world or to sinners. And it comes to do three things. Number one, he convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That means you can never know God unless you're convicted of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. We find this in John chapter 16, verse 7 to 11, where the Bible says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's important for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. And of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. Now this is very important, because... No one can know the Lord until you are convicted by the Holy Spirit of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And I like this scripture because at the time of Jesus, Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit demonstrates that the enemy, Satan, has already been judged, the prince of this world. Satan is not awaiting a future judgment. His judgment has already been passed. And for those who do not know the Lord, Jesus says their condemnation already rests upon them. But when we get born again, then we are able to escape, first of all, from the power of sin, and we escape the judgment of sin in our lives when we get born again. So the Holy Spirit plays a very big role when we are doing evangelism. No one can get saved without the Holy Spirit convicting them. We need to learn when we are going out for evangelism that we need to pray that the Holy Spirit will go with us. We should never do it in our own strength. It's not a formula that gets people to get born again. It's the law of the Holy Spirit that convicts people to repent and turn to the Lord. Another ministry of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit has been uh, given to the church to do several things. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the one who played a big role in the formation of the church. Now, the question is, when was the church formed? The church was formed on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came on those believers, the church was born, and the church was born in, in the power of God. It was not born as a weak church. We know these disciples Jesus had been teaching, when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, became very bold. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter uh, 2, verse 19 to 22, it says, Now therefore you are no, no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and build upon the foundation of apost the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building is fitly put together and grows to become a holy temple in the Lord, in whom also you are built together for a habitation of God by his Spirit. 
So it's the Holy Spirit that is, first of all, formed us, and secondly, is the Holy Spirit that is building the Church of Jesus Christ with one goal, to make sure that the Church of Jesus Christ becomes a habitation of God. And the Bible is very specific. He is building us to be a holy temple. God cannot dwell in a place that is not holy. And holiness is a position we have in Christ, but holiness also is a process. We grow into holiness because Jesus Christ paid the price for us to live a holy life. The Holy Spirit also, concerning the church, he inspires us in worship. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. So the Bible says we are supposed to do what? The Holy Spirit helps us to worship. There is no proper worship where the Holy Spirit does not inspire us and help us. That's the only worship that God approves. The other things the Holy Spirit does in our lives, another thing for the church, the Holy Spirit helps us to know God, to know the things of God by revealing them to us. He helps the church to be a witness. He helps the church to be empowered by the gifts of the Holy Spirit so we can serve God. And the Holy Spirit also is the one who makes us to look like Jesus. So he puts the character of Christ in us. Now, there is nowhere in the Bible the Bible says that we shall be like God. The Bible is very specific in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30, that we are being, com being conformed to the image of Christ. Because Jesus is fully God and fully man. So Jesus has flesh like us. So the Holy Spirit conforms us to look like Jesus because Jesus is the perfect Son of God. Jesus is our pattern and our goal. Everything the Lord is doing in our lives is to make us like Jesus. And the Holy Spirit does this work as a helper. Jesus said the Father is going to send a helper, a comforter, that will help us in the things we are supposed to know, to be witnesses, to have the character of Christ. And there is no area that the Holy Spirit does not cover. I want to encourage you that today you make a decision. You need to see the Holy Spirit as your best helper when you want to learn to pray, when you want to read the Word of God, when you want to learn to reconcile with people, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Just like in the Old Testament, I want to give you an analogy that has really helped me. We know when Abraham wanted Isaac to get married, he told him, you cannot take my son back to the people where I come from. He told Eliezer, you go, God will guide you. And Eliezer asked, what happens if the lady I found does not come? What did Abraham say? God, God will send his angel to help you to bring her. So Eliezer goes with these gifts to look for a bride for Isaac. Now, Rebecca, at that point, Rebecca was a Gentile. Uh, Isaac is part of the chosen people. So it's teaching us when the Lord wants to create a bride, which is the church, he looks for the Gentile bride, okay? But when he goes, he goes with gifts. So Eliezer represents in that book, Abraham represents is a type of God the Father, Isaac is a type, anti-type of Jesus Christ, Eliezer represents the Holy Spirit. And Eliezer does everything for the sake of Isaac, just like the Holy Spirit comes to glorify Jesus in our lives. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he does not come empty-handed. Eliezer arrived with gifts for Laban, the brother, for the mother, and for Rebecca to make her beautiful. The primary work of the Holy Spirit as far as the church is concerned is to make us beautiful for the Lord, to prepare us to be a bride, blameless, without wrinkle, without any blemish. But for the Holy Spirit to do it, we need to cooperate with him. We need to cooperate with him in the work of sanctification, the work of correction, the work of training, the work of equipping, so that we become what God has called us to be. Amen. Another minister of the Holy Spirit, we find the Holy Spirit is there to specifically to reveal like Jesus, like I said. Now there's a part in the Bible, the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus, and Jesus reveals God the Father. Jesus said himself, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Matthew chapter 11, no one can know the Father except I reveal him. So we, re we see the scripture, God has a pattern. 
It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus because Jesus is no longer physically present with us. But he's able to reveal him through scriptures, through encounters with him. Okay? And then Jesus is the one who reveals the Father to us. Now this is very important because if we don't develop a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, we will have a problem with the Lord Jesus Christ. And ultimately we will have a problem with God the Father. When Paul says the grace, you know, the grace is very familiar in the Bible where we pray every day or regularly. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Many people are very conscious of the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of us are not conscious of the fellowship that we need from the Holy Spirit. Fellowship means partnership in the original languages. It means friendship. It means a close connection. You cannot work with a friend you don't agree. So for us to work with the Holy Spirit, for him to help us, we have to become friends. Friends don't quarrel each other. Friends build each other up. The Holy Spirit has come to build us up, not to put us down. But unless we have a proper relationship with the Holy Spirit, it becomes very difficult to have a proper relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit comes to point people to Jesus. And Jesus points people to God the Father. So I want to encourage you in your daily relationship, learn to converse with the Holy Spirit as a person. Ask him questions. If you have difficult scriptures or things you want to learn, ask the Lord to teach you. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you because he is able. He's a very effective teacher. He's a very effective comforter. He's someone who knows how to correct us when you're wrong so that we can learn to walk in the paths of the Lord. And there's another role which is going to play in these end times. One, the Holy Spirit uh, in Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says that the Holy Spirit is the one who uh, quickens our bodies. Okay, We know there is a generation in the Bible that knows Christ that will not die. The Bible is very clear. Paul says we will not all die. There is a generation when Jesus comes, their bodies will be transformed like him before they are raptured. That generation, the quickening of their bodies will be done by the Holy Spirit. Just like the Holy Spirit quickened Jesus when he rose from the dead, he is going to do it for us or for the generation that will be alive when Jesus comes. So the Holy Spirit has a quickening effect on our physical bodies. Uh, let me apply this. When we get born again, God comes to deal, live in our spirit. And then we have a soul. So a man is a spirit, a soul, and a body. Our soul is being changed and transfigured to be, to be like Christ. The word used for transfiguration and the word used for transformation in the Bible is the same word, metamorphosis. So although people fear the word transfiguration and metamorphosis or transformation, is the same word in the original languages. So what God is saying is we get born again at a moment, but to be changed like Christ is a process which the Lord Jesus transforms us to be like him as we behold him, as we learn to pray, as we learn to stay in the word. Those are the agencies God uses to transform us to be like Jesus. But the last thing God is going to do is to quicken our bodies. So one of the manifestations that we know God is going to do it when Jesus comes, he quickens our bodies when we are sick and we get healed. Because healing takes the power of the Holy Spirit. So that is like a deposit showing that if he can heal us today, it means clearly when he comes back, he'll be able to transform our bodies. So healing like a deposit, that this is possible. So I want you to encourage that we need to learn to depend on the Holy Spirit to help us. The final ministry I want to share about the Holy Spirit is he releases the power of God and the glory of God on places around the earth. If you look in church history, we have had moves, strong moves of God, the Holy Spirit moving on the earth in revivals. And if you read church history and revivals, there are places like the Holy Spirit just came to dwell. And anyone entered in that area or that area, uh, their lives were transformed. Either they were convicted of sin, they repented, they turned to the Lord, decided to live a holy life. So we are going to see God start to increase this in the end times because the Lord says that uh, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord 
shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. The same way waters cover the sea, the Lord is going to release his glory all over the earth in places where people will be transformed. We have had examples of revivals in church history. It is going to increase as we come to the end of this uh, season that God is calling us in these end times. And it's the Holy Spirit that creates the atmosphere over places where people can encounter the power of God and the glory of God and be transformed instantly. And this is what we need to be praying for constantly, that the Lord will increase this ministry of the Holy Spirit, releasing his power and his glory all over the earth so that the nations will come to him. So thank you for listening today. I trust that this has blessed you, this introduction on the ministries of the Holy Spirit that is still doing on the earth today. So let's pray together. Father, we just want to thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, even as we celebrate uh, this Pentecost Sunday. We just want to invite the Holy Spirit to minister to every person listening. Father, we pray that everyone will experience the tangible presence of the Lord. I pray, Father, those who are sick, they'll be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are weak, they'll be refreshed by the presence of God. Father, we pray, release your presence, Lord, in the lives of every person that has heard this message today, Lord. Father, we pray, even as we encounter the Holy Spirit, we know we will know Jesus better. We will know the scriptures better. We will pray better and we will know God our Father better. So Holy Spirit, teach us how to have fellowship with you, to relate to you as a person all the days of our lives. I pray this trusting in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.